Welcome back to Battleship Cove. I'm GM1 Tom Lowney. We're here in my element, the 16-inch gun turret on Battleship, Massachusetts. This is turret two. This is what you're looking at is our restoration project that we've jumped into and in trying to get back up to what she really looked like. And the beauty of turret two is she is superimposed over turret one, so she has a half a deck compared to the turret one or turret three, where we have just a simple overhead. We'll take a quick look at turret one later and show you the difference in heights. But this is opened up because she's superimposed over turret one so she can fire at a majority of port and starboard and over the bow. So she has the extra deck and that's been used as shell storage. But when we're here to, in preserving the fleet, what we want to show you is the project that we started. So right here in turret two now, you're looking at kind of dirty and messy, but right now we're in the process of redoing the deck, which means we're bringing it down to bare metal, buffing it up, getting it ready for a primer. So that way you can put down the original color. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of red here and there. Red is terracotta is a bilge paint that was used, used extensively. And on board ship, when it went into mothballs, they wouldn't, when they have to redo the deck to preserve it, they would just cover it with terracotta bilge paint just to cover it. Because you can see here, this is deck gray, battleship gray. Okay, that's the original paint that was in here. And that's our plan is to restore it that way to the way it used to look. Now, when she came to us in mothballs, she had done a yard period back in the 50s as part of the mothball preservation fleet um, program. So when I came through and I had to repaint the deck, they painted it red. But originally, as you can see, it was battleship gray, deck gray, we like to call it, like a bluish gray. So we hope to paint it back to what she used to look like in World War II. And we're buffing it all out because this deck was stripped like 20 years ago because of the um, brass plates that helped us keep tread on here because this is the lowest part of the turret. And you had your firefighting stations down here as well as your firefighting supply to the sprinkler system. So the deck could get occasionally wet if something wasn't sealed right or anything. You want to keep your crews from slipping or having a problem here because you're carrying ammunition, 100 pound bags of black powder that you're moving around. So what we have to put down after we finish painting it up are the original treads. Now they're, they're brass, they're covered with grease and dirt. We're gonna clean them up and we're gonna put them back down eventually. But we have to do the deck first. So right now, we got them all taken off, put aside so we can strip down to bare steel, clean, properly preserve the deck, and repaint it. Which means we're gonna have to dust everything, clean everything down, and polish up the brass and everything. When this is done, it's gonna look fantastic. But in the meantime, it's a little dirty, a little messy, but that's part of preservation. You have to go through and you can't be as meticulous as you want. You have to do it in bulk work, which you can see with the videos that we have that we're going to do that, but we have to do it in stages. We can't do it all at once. So right now we're getting all the steel cleaned up we're doing the outside ring first, that's the fixed structure. Anything on the inside is part of the turret because the turret hangs down into here. She actually rides on the roller path. We've covered it before, but I'll let you know. The roller path is about two or three decks up and what the turret rides on. This is the inner part of the turret that hangs in here. And if you look up at the overhead where the plexiglass stops is basically the rotating part of the turret and the rest of it hangs down into here. So the, this is, this and the shell decks are suspended. So you got two decks of shells 
which are a ton of, you know, 2,700 pound armor piercing shell up to, you have over 300 projectiles in here. So 320 some, 340, depending on like, the mezzanine deck as it's called here is extra ammunition. It's not direct ammunition. This is extra stowage above us, which as you can see in the other videos, but that would be distributed throughout the rest of the ship as needed until you could rearm as you were doing underway replenishment. But you could have an extra setup. And then during the Battle of Casablanca, after they expended 60, over 60% 60 of their ammunition, they came here and they distributed all this to the other parts of the turret, and they found out that the way to do that was very difficult and had to be improved. And the monorail system helped, but it turned out uh, very difficult to do and very intense for the crew after having battle done, but they did it because they had to worry about the other French battleship, uh, Rachel, coming down from southern France to attack, but she was laid up. She wouldn't have been able to, but they didn't know that. But you had to prepare for it. So in this, in this process here, we're going to be repainting it all. So as, as you can see in the videos that we have here, some short intakes, we had officer candidates from Newport, Rhode Island come up and they volunteered and jumped in and started attacking the deck. So we're using bristle brushes and cleaning to what looks like nice shiny steel. So that way when we can put the primer down, we'll alcohol wipe it, we'll clean it and prep it, and then lay primer down, and then the final top coat. So now we're up here on what's called the mezzanine deck. Now the mezzanine deck, as said, is extra stowage, which we've covered in previous videos that would be normally distributed to the rest of the tourists after a battle to restock. You wouldn't do it in the middle of the battle, would not be the ideal thing, but you could do it intermediately with a, you pull out from the initial battle zone, get your butt to work, move the shells back, come back into the battle. It's ideally what you'd want to do, but you can actually start. Just to remind you, these are actual 16 inch projectiles. These are the 1900 bodies, the Mark 141, if I remember correctly. And these would be high explosive, high capacity, depending on how you would outload the interior package. They're thin walled, not armor piercing. The armor piercings are out on deck, what we have, and you can see them in another video. But right here, these were given to this by the Navy for storage because the Iowa's were decomped and they had to clean a warehouse out. And they said, well, Battleship NASA, would you like to have projectiles. So the Navy gave all the museum battleships all its BLMP, blind loaded and plugged projectiles. These can actually be fired, but they're filled with sand to balance the weight out so that the ballistics and the firing would be very similar to the real McCoy. So these are actual projectiles. They're a little dirty. We'll get them repainted, but that's another story, another time. What we're looking at here is down in the turret here at the center powder flats. So you can see how all this can come together and we'll get there one day. Not right away, but we'll get there. It just takes time. So we want to thank you for coming in. Stay tuned because the turret is going to be a never-ending story to replace missing equipment as well as cleaning, repainting, restenciling, getting it back up to what it would really look like. So when I retire here shortly, this is going to be one of my favorite projects. I'll be spending a little more time in here. But until then, I'll be here doing videos, doing restoration, and helping out with all the help, especially from Officer Candidate School and other Navy former and other volunteers. It's a team effort. We don't do it all ourselves. We do it as a team effort. We work together just like the crew does. And our crew are the volunteers, either active, inactive, or civilians. That's our crew. I want to thank you for visiting. I want you to like, share, and subscribe so you can keep track of what's going on here and help us out. And again, if you want to look at volunteering and be part of the crew, come on down, contact us, call the ship, 508-678-1100, and follow the instructions, and hopefully we can get you in here or send us an email or use the links and get back to us. We're always looking for help. Thank you for your time. I'll see you again. I'm GM1 Tom Lowney. Have a good day.